This year marked the 10th anniversary of a terrorist atrocity that changed the world. The coordinated attacks in America that led to the deaths of almost 3,000 people. The effects of 9-11 continue to impact lives a decade on. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Association believes there's been a rise in religious extremism in Europe since 2001. A debate on the issue called Murder in the Name of God was held at the European Parliament in Brussels. This is a message from His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community. And he says, let me first thank all of you for participating in this debate. It is taking place at a time when both religious extremism and right-wing extremism seems to hold the world to ransom, while the man in the street is too preoccupied with the struggle for existence. Although the trend of civilization is toward unity, and it is claimed that we live in a global village, mankind has never stood so disunited. The debate looked at some of the root causes of extremism, where it started, and what measures the European Parliament could take to tackle it. One thing that people should say today, uh, and I will certainly be saying myself, is that there are no easy answers to this. Um, there are plenty of people tackling terrorism from a security angle, uh, but when it comes to the politics and the cultural aspect of things, it depends on each separate country within the European Union. So there are no blanket, easy solutions, but the more we talk about these issues, the more we challenge and have debate, the more successful we will be in tackling them. I think that we, since 9-11, the world has become less secure. I think there is more turmoil in this world. You know, after the fall of the Cold War, uh, we thought that we were going into a peaceful world. But unfortunately, that did not happen. And now we have a, a global society which has all kinds of issues in terms of extremism. And if we're going to bring about peace, everyone has to come together and contribute. Otherwise, you know, we will not be able to achieve peace. 350 people from nine countries attended the conference. They told Pukar News why an event like this was so important. I think it is very important to, uh, to, have, to have the whole community here in the parliament to show uh, that they exist and that they are under uh, threat. It's a very good event for fostering or continuing to foster communication amongst people across the different faith traditions, which, you know, that's the era we live in. It's very important to do that. The event was very interesting. I think we need more events like this where we discuss issues that are central but aren't raised very often. And um, this debate very vocally showed that everyone is on the same side, so we should have more debates like these. But an official who represented the Pakistani government wasn't impressed, and he made his feelings clear. But these can't vote in Pakistan. It's not based on fact. Any notion that Ahmadiyyas as community have been subject to human rights violation in Pakistan is completely devoid of facts. <laughs> Any isolated, any isolated incidents in Pakistan cannot be characterized as religious violence against particular minorities. As a matter of fact, such incidents, such incidents were the fallout of the ongoing war against terrorism and extremism. I'm very glad to be here. Um, it was very interesting to hear what was said. And I thought it was very unfortunate, the, I believe the gentleman that walked out was from the Pakistani government. So I, I think um, that was quite sad that they didn't recognise what was being said as, as the truth. In recent years, fundamentalists have targeted minorities and those from other faiths in a number of countries. In Pakistan, Ahmadi Muslims, Christians, Hindus and Sikhs have suffered years of abuse and years of burying or cremating victims of indiscriminate attacks. Earlier this year in Indonesia, violence reared its ugly head when a machete-wielding mob killed three members of the Ahmadi community. There have been countless incidents too of churches being burnt and people losing their lives, murder in the name of religion. Yet the cruelty is not confined to Asia. 
The tragic deaths in Norway this year shows that religious ideology is being used by fanatics for their own purposes. Delegates heard that extremism is being imported into Europe at an alarming rate. The government have their own ways of, of dealing with it. Um, sometimes I feel that one of the things that we have in the West which is very valuable is free speech. And when you have free speech it means that you have to allow everyone to air their views. And this obviously also gives the extremist element in our society to air their views. And sometimes, if they're not properly regulated, then you can find that they will be spreading discord in society generally. Since 9-11, Al-Qaeda have claimed responsibility for horrific acts around the world. But what influence have they had on other terrorist groups? Certain organisations have mimicked the Al-Qaeda model to a certain extent. Uh, I think there's no organisation that really comes into comparison uh, in terms of the global network of Al-Qaeda. And You can talk about Al-Qaeda central, if you like, associated with Osama bin Laden, but also Al-Qaeda inspired terrorism around the UK. Uh, what has happened is that affiliate organisations such as Al-Shabaab or Al-Qaeda in the Islamic uh, Maghreb, former uh, um, Algerian Islamic fighting groups, uh, those organisations have become more active. Uh, uh, while arguably Al-Qaeda Central looks a little weaker. So what message do the panellists hope to convey? Tolerance, peace, and that we want to basically face down the extremists within our societies, religious extremists, who incite violence and hatred. And I think that the Ahmadi community, who are a model community in terms of integration, uh, work for charity, tolerance, these are the people who need to be promoted. As I will say in my speech, the Sufi tradition of Islam needs to be reinforced and the Salafists, who are the hardliners who preach violence and hatred, need to be shouted down and need to be isolated. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Association says more needs to be done to prevent the spread of extremism in Europe and across the world. And they believe it's vital that those responsible of religiously motivated violence are brought to justice.